You want to tell people that God is the God that provides for them. He's a God that gives salvation, justice, and provision. This is a complete God, right? Look all the things that He does for you. He gives you the salvation. He's a just God and provides for all your needs. He's an amazing God. This is a God that you get to serve. Amazing. Then shall the earth yield her increase. Okay. We have a lot of people here tonight, but anybody works in the country? Any farmers? Nobody. Wow, that doesn't work. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I give you my illustration then. <laughs> I never worked in the country, <laughs> but I know one thing. I grew up in Montevideo, the city, so I don't know anything about agriculture. But if I have a little seed and I make a hole in the ground here and I put that seed there and I cover the ground and I put water in it, and I do that every morning, you know, a couple times a day, I don't know, whatever I have to do. <laughs> What's going to happen to that seed? What's going to happen in a few days? Something green is going to come out, right? We're going to see something happening. So I said, wow, look at that. And I keep putting water there. And I put maybe whatever I have to put, you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I keep putting water. And I get to the point and say, wow, look at that fruit or whatever it, it came out now. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be funny. That's ter terrible. <laughs> look that fruit that came out. And I say, wow, look what the ground did. Look what the earth did. Isn't that amazing? And we all say, no. That wasn't the ground. That wasn't the earth. That was God. If that thing came out, if that fruit came out, it's not because of the ground. It was God. Because God is so powerful. He, he can say, Hey, this year, guess what? No fruit. And no matter how much water you put there, you can put it, keep putting it there. Guess what? Ain't going to happen, right? Nothing. Nothing is going to come out because it's not the ground. It's God. It's God that provides. Here it says, obviously, the earth, uh, I'm sorry, verse 6, then shall the earth yield her increase, but God, even our own God, shall bless us. That's the truth. The truth is that God is the one that provides for us. And I say this now. Many of you have many more years than I do, okay? And I have to respect you completely and learn from you. Many of you are retired. But if any of us here say, I have what I have because I'm a hardworking person, Biblically, we have to say, no, that's incorrect. God has blessed you because you work hard. And you see in Proverbs that if you work hard, if you're disciplined, God will bless you. Yes, that is true. But we can never say, I have what I have because I'm a hardworking person. The only reason you have what you have is because there is a good God in heaven that gave it to you. That's it. Because God is a good God that provides for all our needs. Even in the midst of this recession, whatever is going on right now, God is the one that provides. He's not going to be our president, the government. No, our faith is not there. Faith is in God because He's the one that makes that fruit come out. No, no matter how many uh, this, uh, what do they call this, economy, uh, Stimulus, thank you so much. This stimulus that they send, you know that. God is the one that provides. So, we can attach this to our theme, right? God is the one that provides for missions as well. And let me just add this to your thoughts on missions. If you're a Christian today, if you desire the glory of God, that God will be worshipped and praised, you will pray and you will say, God, I want more people out there to worship you. Pray, God, please send whoever needs to go to China, to Japan, so people in China start worshiping you, so you have more worshipers. 
And when you have more worshipers, you receive more glory. <coughs> God, I'm going to give as much as I can, whatever you want for me to do. Because I know if I give, <coughs> excuse me, if I give more, I'm going to go and tell more people and you will receive more glory. And I'm going to go. If that's what you have for me, Lord. We all go. Some just a few blocks, right? <laughs> Here in Delaware. Others thousands of miles. But we all go. We all must go. But we go, why? Because there's a great God in heaven that deserves the worship of more people. And that's what we want. We want to reach more people. Not so we can have right there 250 Sunday school, 350 Sunday morning. Numbers, that doesn't matter. We want our great God to receive more worship and more glory. And what? The year, the verse 7 says, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. That's what we want. The ends of the earth to fear this great God. Not to be afraid of him, but to honor him, to respect him, to give him the praise that he deserves, the worship that he deserves. You see how crucial we are as Christians that we can do all those three things and be so um, change things or what's going on concerning the worship of God. If we do those things, we can influence how much God is worshipped. And not so much a number, but we want God to be worshipped in the right way, right? Many times we focus on men even in our ministries here in America. We turn on the TV very often. And we see churches. And we wonder if there are churches. We wonder what's going on there. And many times we say, hey, what's going to help to have more people coming here? Oh, I have an idea. Let's bring that type of music. You know, people like that. Yeah, let's do that. Hey, pastor, just don't preach too much about sin. People don't like that. If you keep preaching about sin, we're not going to get anybody here. So just slow down there, okay? Just preach about love. Preach about family. That's a popular topic, right? Because the focus is men. What can you do so men come here? It's a good thing, right? People come to church. That's great. And we focus on men, and we forget the most important thing, why? That God is ultimate, not men. And when you start focusing on men, you, know, you do all these things, so men are happy and all these things. What? God is in the second place. And that's the same for, war, for missions, for any of our ministries here. God is always ultimate. And we must remember that. If you want to have compassion for souls let's God, ask God to give us passion for him passion for God will bring compassion for souls I invite you to close your eyes and spend some time now talking to the Lord <coughs>